save this stream. Looks like they're connecting. Hmm. That was quite a bit of lag. Okay, I guess there's a bit of latency here. That's fun. Um, okay, let's do a quick... Um, Test on uh, which hello, okay, that appeared. That's good. Um, <clears throat> hello, you could make sure any people in the chat can. Okay, cool. We are good to go. So today is a fun topic. Um, we're going to go over <clears throat> how to do FPGA CRAM fault injection with the ICAT primitive. But we're going to do this inside of the LIDEX ecosystem over uh, PCIe, specifically targeting the Squirrel, Acorn, Night Fury, Light Fury type FPGAs. Uh, this is an interesting project. I got to... Uh, Kind of add a new simple module to a lightx was nice um i got to get the pci driver figure out how to work it um it's not directly memory map you have to use their driver software to properly address everything on the on the uh fpga uh, wishbone bus um but yeah overall it was i think it was a good experience i hope um to be able to eventually push these changes upstream add a configuration frame read and write feature to the lightx <laughs> but the We'll take a bit. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, let me make sure it's not implemented for different FPGAs. I guess I could test it across different FPGAs. I have a bunch here. <clears throat> okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. So let's go and talk about how you do configuration. Um, <clears throat> so to our our great configuration guide. <clears throat> um, so we have multiple interfaces where we can do config, uh, we can do a, uh, a readback commands. So we can use um, hopefully the stream is good. I don't know why it's it's unhappy. Uh, um okay I'll, let me i'll make a note of the need to fix potentially write that down youtube is not happy with my uh, stream software okay so we have three different interfaces that we can um, do readback across we can do across jtag select map and icap <clears throat> they all are accessing the same configuration core um, so it's a, basically the same sequence. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is look at this guide and talk about the sequence. So these are um, readback command sequences for the registers right here, configuration register. But we want to do configuration memory. Um, so the command we want to do is we want to do basically we want to do the sync word. Um, this configuration command to do uh, readback. We want to, uh, well, it's, I get, no, that's a different, it's readback right here. Um, do this command to do readback. We want to change the FAR, which is the frame address register. This is picking which register we're trying to read at. These are the number of words we're going to read. Um, specifically for a single frame, a uh, single frame is 101 words. I'll, we'll go look for that in a second. Um, but the, we'll, we'll, we'll change different value here. Um, oh, no, well, this is the... This is right here. How many words we're reading? Reading the full Kintex seven part um, in the in, in the demonstration here. But we're going to do a different type of <clears throat> king configuration. Uh, first, one hundred and one words are a dummy frame. That's important because we're going to have to read one hundred and one words before we get to actual data. Um, other than that, that's basically it. If we go to the JTAG sequence. It's basically doing um, the same sequence, right? We have this is the full same thing where we're going to put in a configuration mode. We're going to write the far right here. We're going to write how many words we're going to read. 
then we're going to uh, read them. Okay, now if we search for the 101 words, we talk about right there. I found 62 of them. I have to do words. And it's only there. Uh, whatever. There's some place where it talks about frame size, frame length. Ugh, it's somewhere in this document. Um, frame, frame address. Um, there's a breakdown of the frame address right here. <clears throat> um, okay. The sentence here is divided into two halves, the top and bottom. All frames have a fixed identical length of 3,232 3, bits or 101 32 bit words. Um, we have a block type from the front, which is um, going to be in most situations, your configuration memory, your block RAM and your configuration CLB. Um, Yeah, um, to do the bottom row, column, minor address. Uh, they're interesting things. Okay, so let's look at what Lidex is currently doing for their ICAP solution. So um, let's scroll down to actually the primitive. Um, so here, if um, this is the primitive right here, we have a primitive called the ICAP2, set to 32 bit width, um, and then we have the chip select, read, write, and the input and output. Lidex has uh, simplified the ICAP process. They have the configuration registers and some configuration commands. But um, the way they're doing their interface is that you give it an address for a configuration register and you read or write that configuration register. So it comes down to um, reading a configuration register or no, writing a configuration register or reading a configuration register. This is very specific. This type of um, framework does not allow us to do the uh, fancy configuration frame readback where we need to have several sequences in a row. But I wanted to make sure this worked properly. So um, we were, I was able to build it on the system and get the kernel working. <clears throat> and let's show you um, this, this. Okay, yeah. Let's show you what the kernel does for ICAP. So the kernel has a single command for ICAP and it's doing a write only right so you get to write the address and the data and that's it there's no reading um the the kernel driver software does not do any uh icap memory read luckily for us um we can do raw reads in the user driver <clears throat> so what i did to demonstrate it was working is i use the uh this is the id code um i I uh, used his interface of address data um, to assign the configuration ID code register and then to read it and to verify that it worked. Um, let me see. We a picture of this. <laughs> okay, so this is what it ended up looking like um, at the end results where we got the correct ID code at the end. <clears throat> so. Let's go to how we did the BitBang version. That is going to be here. Um, so I added a new version called ICAP raw. And um, in this situation, we are manually um, flipping the clock, the chip select, the read, I and O. Um, cook, the, hook, cook that all up to the um, ICAP2 um, instance. And then for our control status registers, we are, we are directly connected to the ICAP. We can do everything we need to. And um, the ICAP does not have to have a continuous clock. You can bit bank it just fine. It doesn't get angry at you. It's, it's, it's okay. And this was relatively easy to do. I don't think this is a good solution in the long run. Um, you would want a DMA core, a FIFO DMA core on the input and the output if you want to do uh, fast uh, configuration readback. A fault injection or CRAM scrubbing. So, how do we then 
um, how are we now going to do a configuration read back with this ICAP? So um, let's look at these sequences. So we have an ID code sequence here. And it's just, you know, sync and no op read ID code reg no ops. Let's count this out real quick. So um this is our ID code. Um got the one fine. And what it's doing is it's running, um, just yeah, just sending in the correct input sequence to request the ID code through the configuration register. So there's two locations for ID code. One is on the JTAG IR register, and one is in the configuration register. It's always good to check both of those when you're doing any like JTAGs level stuff. Okay, so here we are connected to a Linux machine that has a as the acorn on a PCI connection we can make here. And then we I put into the scratch test example. So we're a little bit so you can see it better. Um okay. And it does this fun scratch test, reads the default registers, and then it reads the ID code. <clears throat> okay. So let's talk about um reading reading the uh configuration memory and then we can go and try to do some fancy fault injection it's a lot difficult a lot more difficult um, so we got um think word again no up this is a Right to command reg. This is a read back configuration command, which allows you to do readout of the device. A few more no ops. This is a write to um, bar, which is the frame address register, and we're writing a zero. Frame. Um, here we are writing the FDO, looks like frame, FDO, what is it, what is this, this is oh, going to be, yeah, the FDRO register, number, number of read, Back words. Um, the 48 is part of the packet, but this is requesting 202 words. 101 is dummy data. And then we got a dummy word and a number of dummy words. <clears throat> okay. So um, let us go read a frame. So let me do, I have a, this is a JTAG tickle script that uses the Xilinx SDB tool to read frames. So we're going to use this to read a frame and we can see um, frame zero. These are non-zero frames of 101 words. Now, if we go over here to our scratch test, if we got to run make first, then we run this. We now have the data that we read. So if you look at the output, we look out, out after 101 words. Right here, so 102 words, we have the beginning of the frame. And it matches the data we have over here. So we have successfully read a frame. So now is the we need to write a frame and eventually do um uh that's what this kind of I guess the remainder of our uh, stream is gonna be writing code to read and write frames. Um, so let's clean up, um, well, let's try to, um, 
write the frame back. Okay, so um, let's do a write frame sequence and see what we can do. So let's copy this guy. Um, write frame. And right, right. Right frame from hands. Keep it simple. Okay. The so it's actually very interesting um, doing a write command. You have to uh, submit the ID code as a key. Let's go um, figure out, let's go show you where, how this happens. So it's not terribly clear how to do a single one, but there's a configuration. So if we, there's a configuration sequence somewhere here. Uh, bitstream composition right here. <clears throat> um, this is probably the place we're going to steal it. We want to get to the data writing. Here's the value am I looking for? I'm looking for three zero zero one eight oh one. Okay, right here. This is where we need to get to and write the ID code. Writing the ID code allows us to write. It's like a, it's a key. Um, and we're writing a readback CRC command as well. What's that, where's that popping? Okay, so we're doing this command here reset CRC register, and then we're going to write the ID code. Okay, so we have the sync word, dummy word. We're gonna write um, feedback CRC, gonna be a seven. And then we're going to do a write ID code command from here, which is gonna be a, this one right here. Um, and then we're going to write the ID code and we have this, you know, little convenient picture to show us, but, um, grab it from here. Oh, were you not happy with how that worked? We're not desync properly earlier. Okay. There's the ID code. Now we're going to see what now it's doing next. So next we're gonna write doing the uh right too far. Okay, so we're writing to the far. Okay, so let's go see where this appears in the configuration guide. Um, Rio, so, so it's okay, it's up here. And they're writing a command. What command are they writing for that? I do control register oh, right here. This one right here. They're writing this command right here. Write configuration data. <clears throat> okay. 
So we're going to do the frame address and write configuration data. So um, right to the far. So that's a good one. Keep that one. Now let's, we're going to do an 80001 command here. And we're going to do a one right to, right to command. This is going to be uh, the right configuration command. Is that listed in the LightX thing? Man one uh, is not clearly listed. Okay, we don't want you to know about that. But they do uh, tell you in the bitstream composition. Um. So now we're going to write the three zero zero four. And we're going to write how many words? Okay. So we're going to do three, three, four. Writing uh, input, we're going to write five zero, because that's the header for this one. And we're going to write the data. And I believe that's it. Let me check. One plus words per frame. Um, okay. Looks like we need an additional one on one words to push it through. Frame read sequence. Where's the data going? Oh, command right, data hex, data end. <laughs> So we want to write 102 words back. Okay, I can do that. Um, the sequence, I just want to make sure I got this sequence covered. Um, yeah, we got, we're good. Okay, so now this is, we're not going to do this. We're going to need data to be added to, so we should find. Um, so now we need to make a sequence. We need to combine these. Um, so it's what we're gonna do. We need to read the data. So let's where we that here. Um, we're going to do a right frame full command and it's going to be that length and for int i equals two r equals zero i less than 14 um <clears throat> and this is going to be less than 12 I plus plus. We're gonna say full I full end of I. We're gonna do another for loop. Add the frame data we have previously. Um, and we're going to start at twelve, and we're gonna to go to to fourteen. Going to do buy out register minus twelve. Um, let's just see if those things work before we go crazy.
Um, okay, yeah, um, see if it makes. Have an air. Um, by my four loops says 2022. Um, this is me writing in Python. I can write me keep track of everything. Hey, scratch test. We're happy. Okay, everything came out well. Um, oh no. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to start at 112. So 215 is to be subtracted oh, by 113. I don't know how we gotta do this. We gotta, we are, we wanna start at 102 and we wanna go to 202. I'm gonna leave that eye the same. This eye is going to be uh, 12. And, um, no, it's going to be, what is, we want to start writing at the 12th location with 102. So it's going to be whatever, um, what, uh, 102 minus 12. Um, so that's going to be 90. 90. We'll get us to the 12th spot. And then we're going to go there. And this should, um, this is going to be the last. Oh, I think to print this out, we're going to have to, um, print this out so I can keep track of everything. Um, so grab this print statement. And I, I, I minus ninety, I minus ninety. This is. <clears throat> So 101, that's only going to be 100, you got to start at the 101, it's been 89, great, um, so 89 plus 12, no, 101 plus 12, it's going to be 113, 214, I here, <clears throat> make sure they line up, okay cool, that was more work than I want. Me not things correctly, like this, okay, um, help it might have been useful to do something different, okay, um, Data's good. So we're doing our sequence. Our sequence ends at well. Five C A. We want to hit twelve, so I guess ninety is still okay. Um, oh, we want to start at 102 and then go to 202. Okay. Brain is not getting this the way it wants to. Okay, let's try now. Like, verify. Okay. That's where we want the data to start. Then we're going to go to 113. 113 is the last of the data which is a zero so like how can i tell give me a quick second i'm going to inject the fault into that register i know um so it's going to be 
100. Hit throw. Cool. Get to the fault there. And now I know where the last one is. Um, be around a hundred. That's the frame. Oh, it's there. The frame. So one. Are we not reading enough frames? Starting at one oh two. Yeah, we're starting at one oh two. I need to read another frame. So I guess we're going to say two oh three. And um three there, I guess. Last bit. We're overriding it here. We'll have to figure that out. Right there. So we're starting at one of two. Is it supposed to be after three clocks? Let me see. Easiest thing maybe to add another clock to it. I want to read the ID code a few times to see that lines up with what's expected. Okay. Uh... Okay, cool. That's at a hundred and eleven. This end at a hundred up over one early. As this is now starting out one one, which makes sense. I like this better. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so we need to start at one oh one. Eighty nine. 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 You can go. Two one, right now. Yeah, you want to go two one? How we go? Um. And where is that one? Yes, we're missing twelve. That should hit twelve now. Do a double one down here. No. Oh, okay, wait, it should be. That should. Ugh, I just don't want to screw up the uh, FPGA, so we got to make sure the data is correct. Uh, when you send that message. Hello. Um, okay, so at the 112, there. Great. Um, because that should be 101 after that command. Okay, cool. So I think we're ready to write. Um, let's try writing, I guess. Hopefully we don't uh, screw up everything. Happy with how I'm doing things. Okay, we're gonna read the frame again. Let's happy. So let's let's induce a fault. Okay. Um going to induce a fault. We're going to do it at the last register, which is going to be a hundred and twelve. And we're going to say zero. Okay, now we're going to make branch test read. Woo! Look at that. We fixed it. We should also fix zero. I wrote Fs to that one. Which is gonna be well, 
Um, okay. Oh. Read. Okay, that's good. Um, so we are going to do a cute little uh, graphic like that. Um, we're going to say a one here, and then we're going to do a full read again. Values, I just rerun that. Um, I'll have to make a new after frame per se. Um, after, after, okay. Um, section array. So, write a cute little GUI um, for go see the printout from this fault injection. See if I can just use that style. Do inject. There's inject faults. Okay. You want to basically say if both data words don't work, and okay. So we're gonna go in each of these. We're gonna go from a 101 to 202. So, you know, grab. I'm gonna say. Um, anything useful to say? Oh, we should probably say the frame. Um, so. Here. Say frame. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We'll hard code it right now. Okay. Um, so if. If fo fo array of i is not equal to zero, or Or, yeah. Um, here. Or, um, whole thing. Put in a fault injection array. Um, close. Like this. Then we're going to <clears throat> uh, print something. First, we gotta see if they're the same. So, we're gonna say. Else, okay, and we're going to do a nice right. Um, so like this, um, one, two, three. Um, I will just do slash T, um, just do this again, we're just going to go that, and this time we're going to put a space arrow there are you happy with my uh i don't know you're happy with what i did you are huh. well um let me just go and inject that fault back okay 
apparently we need to think smarter about yeah do this hmm. um drink up for rain okay so i think it should be prettier now mate one side okay here we go Oh, we need to make a number minus uh, one. Yeah, so let's go back here. We want to say uh, I minus 101. I minus 101. Make six stitch bolt. Rerun. Yeah, let's hard code those uh, fuckers. Oh, I, I know. We gotta do a zero three. Yeah. Um, make check again. Do do do. Uh, okay. Um. <clears throat> Nipping tool. All that, um, uh, uh, light it's fault injection. Okay. So, I think that's, yeah, it's probably a good place to end. So, we got fault injection working. We were able to read the frames, able to write the frames. Um, look at, um, uh, put the sequences on screen as we finish up. Um, oh, for bit banging, um, we never really talked about how we did bit banging. Bit banging, I just follow the sequences that are in the configuration guide, read the documentation, it's not that hard. Um, things are sampled, um, things are read for, from the ICAP's perspective. So the ICAP receives data on the rising edge, and I think it outputs data on the on the falling edge. It's kind of hard to see that, but it's okay. It's pretty easy to sample, especially this Big Bang method. Um, if we do higher speeds, it gets more complicated, but eh, it's not too big of an issue. It's you can you can simulate it too, so it's it's nice that way you can really do. Oh, we should talk about old port codes. If you're ever having issues debugging ICAP, there's some um, abort. Abort. Okay, here we go. Select my abort. Go down the bottom. It has these abort status words. These are very, very, very useful. Resolving some issues. Okay, so future work. Um, we'll try to push uh, configuration write and read to the ICAP core. Um, maybe we can add an open OCD JTAG option to LIDEX, or just my own. Open OCD, that might be my own repository sometime. And no one's really needed it though. Uh, we should look at the frame ECC. Is the frame ECC here? Let me see the frame ECC. Frame ECC. Maybe let's show you. Um, go back here. Um, let's look at the uh, Curious Seven Primitives right here. Um, this software manual? Sure, it be a software manual. Um, hello, hello, hello. Um, there's a bunch of primitives, right? Do you not have them listed? You're just gonna go at. Okay, cool. So we type in frame. There's a frame ECC two, and this is very useful for doing um CRC checking. Uh, okay, what's what's this? This file is an output by the ICAP E2 model and it contains frame data for the raw. 
the stream RBG file, the frame, I will parse this file and capture ECC out of any air condition. So we need to um auto parse okay. So um we could look at reading the syndrome. I know a, a, a dissertation that we can uh, do to understand it better. We may look into that. Uh, but yeah, let's um, ICAP is fault injection is useful. Our configuration memory access is useful. We can inject faults, um, see how radiation, both terrestrial and um, celestial, or um, extraterrestrial radiation affects uh, FPJs here on Earth and in space. We can also do CRAM scrubbing through this interface as well to mitigate against um SEUs in the CRAM. So this is kind of related to my own personal uh or my PhD research. So it was interesting getting this up and running and working on it. Um hopefully we can get an ICAP modification soon, but uh no one's pressuring me for it, so it's not a big deal. Uh I may be on tomorrow, I may not. We'll see. Um I'll be working on trying to get a wrapper around light X the Lightx SOC system, so I can um, use it as a duck. It's I, I kind of have a special use case. It doesn't really match any current option, but we'll see what I can do. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, feel free to join the Discord, watch on Twitch.